This is the Majesty 111 by Golfcraft. It's brand new for 2023 and we're catching up with it here at the Monaco Yacht Show. She's just shy of 111 feet long, 240 gross tons with space for 12 guests and six crew. And she's got one of the most spectacular owner's cabins I've seen on a yacht of this size. So make sure you hang around to see that. We've got a full tour though, top to tail. Let's get on with it. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Before we get into it though, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll never miss another tour like this one. Starting right after here then, underneath my feet you have a tender garage. Unfortunately, we can't film in there at the moment, but there is space for a five meter tender in there. You have a fixed platform, but there is an extending section that comes out and creates a ladder that either goes up to the quayside, separate to the passerelle, or can drop down into the water to give you that nice shallow stairway into the water when you want to go swimming. Then up into the main deck, huge cockpit on this yacht with a really big substantial overhang you've got very good protection here if you want to have meals in the shade this is where you want to be look at the size of this table as well plenty of space to serve guests out here a nice mix of sofa and freestanding chairs and then a glass transom as well so you have an unbroken view out the back of the boat there's also a sunshade that drops down here both for some protection but also some privacy if you're stirring to a busy quayside like we are now that just gives you a little bit of privacy Moving forward down on the port side, you have access through to the engine room. Starboard side runs all the way up to a staircase that goes up to the foredeck. We're going to look at all of that later on. But for now, I think we should move inside and check out the interior. Moving inside the saloon and on the 111 Golfcraft have a new collaboration in terms of interior decor with a Dutch firm called Phantom. And it's a really striking interior actually. It's very cozy, it's comfortable, but there are some nice touches that really pop out like the lighting, this lovely rug down here, the furniture is, is really quite interesting. And yeah, it just looks a bit different. It's a nice sort of mix of European American tastes. And I think they, they tread that line really carefully. Um, lots of light in here. You've got pretty much full height windows on both sides. I should mention that opposite this massive seating area here, the TV swings down from the ceiling, but that is not the most spectacular TV on this boat, as you will soon find out. Moving forward, we obviously have a nice big dining space here. This is really well set up to, to comfortably seat guests and dine inside. You know, I talked about the lighting. It's really playful and lovely throughout, but this is a real fixture here. This lighting piece over the central dining table works very, very nicely indeed. Through that doorway on the port side, that's the galley, and that has direct access down to the crew space for, for obvious reasons, but of course that can all be closed off and kept private, and there's a side door out onto the deck so the crew can get around the boat without having to come through the saloon. And then we come to a really key feature of the interior design of the 111, which is this central atrium. Great use of glass, you can see in the banisters, but also in the deck head and the deck above. And that draws loads of natural light down into this area, and crucially down onto the lower deck where you've got five guest cabins. We're obviously gonna go and have a look at those in a moment. But although this is a very big staircase because of the use of glass and light materials, it doesn't dominate the area. It works really effectively. Moving forward, we have a day head here, very neatly concealed, and right forward, the owner's cabin, which is pretty special. It's full beam and interestingly, you've got the walk-in wardrobe and bathroom here, sort of further amidships than you might expect, but they've worked the space really well because you've got lots of wardrobe hanging storage here. There's one over here, one over here. It's all smoke glass as well. Pop the doors open, it all lights up, works very, very effectively. And then you've got a pocket door here to separate you from the bathroom, which is a lovely size, all decked out in marble, twin sinks, you can see the size of the shower cubicle and a very clever use of glass to give you a wonderful view out while you're having a shower. That's a, that's a fabulous space. But not quite as fabulous as the cabin itself, which obviously stretches right forward, broadens out to take the beam of the boat. And well, there are some standout features in here. There's the width, there's the glass on either side. There's the size of the television mounted up here on the bulkhead. But what a bit of design this is the pool visible on the foredeck through this window here. That is just fabulous. A nice sunny day like this, you get the sun pouring through the water, lying in bed, waking up to that of a morning would be really quite special. And of course you've got a blind as well, so you have a bit of privacy, but I think that's a great bit of design. And obviously we'll see the effect of the hot tub itself when we head up into the foredeck in a moment. But for now, let's head downstairs and have a look at the guest cabins. 
you're looking for a boat of this size with charter in mind, well, the 111 suits that purpose very, very well because you've got five cabins here on the lower deck. Of course, you have the owner's cabin up top on the main deck. So to have that amount of guest sleeping space down here on the lower deck is, is pretty fab. And we'll start here in midships where you have identical VIP en suites. They've got double beds. They've got their own TVs, obviously and they've got a good amount of storage plus really nicely fitted out and large ensuite bathrooms. This is the port side one. As I said, they're both exactly the same. Now, if we head forward on the lower deck, you have huge amounts of storage on either side behind these mirrored doors here. And then we arrive at a pair of twins. And again, they're identical. So we'll pick the starboard one because they are exactly the same. So slightly smaller footprint than the VIPs and midships, but still very nicely fitted out, still get their own AV in here and a really good sized bathroom. Again, totally private to each cabin, so there's no sharing bathrooms on this boat. Heading right forward, we come to the cherry on the cake of the guest accommodation because this is the forward VIP and this is huge space. But it's a little lobby area when you come in, lots of storage arranged here on the port side, plus a bureau down there. Headroom is tremendous. I'm six foot tall, you can see how much space I've got above my head here. Lovely large bed as well, not set too low or too high, it's just right. You've got steps up either side so it's nice and easy to get in. And I really like the circular porthole details. I think they work really effectively. Okay, you've not got natural light coming in from above so you need those. And maybe a big slab of hull window would have brought more light in. But I do think they look nicer. And it's beautifully finished as well. I like the big side tables you've got with charging there and lots of space to put your bits and bobs at night. I think it's really nicely finished. And it's also very nicely finished in the ensuite, which is really large, nearly as big as the master. And again, it's got a separate shower cubicle, beautifully fitted out in marble, a really luxurious space. Talking of luxurious spaces, let's head up to the upper deck. We'll start the upper deck tour here on the bridge then. And it's a very business-like arrangement. These three enormous Garmin MFDs, as you can see, this is the sort of split the skipper will probably use when the boat's on passage. You've got cameras so you can keep an eye on everything going around the boat. You've got all the digital switching here. So you, everything to do with the systems of the boat is all controllable by this screen here and then charting in the middle. And then lots and lots of different control panels for all the various different bit of equipment on board. Her engines are twin MAN V12 1900s for a top speed of 20 knots. When it comes to slow speed control, well, you'll notice the steering wheel is, is pretty tiny. You're not really gonna have too much to do with that on a yacht of this size. You're gonna be using the throttles and the thrusters at slow speed, and then she'll be on autopilot pretty much as soon as she gets on passage, I imagine. The wing stations on this yacht aren't either side of the bridge like you might usually find. They're down in the cockpit, but right down aft. So if you're coming stern two, which this boat will be doing a lot, considering where it's likely to be kept, you've got a fantastic view aft of the bathing platform, but of course, great oversight here using the cameras as well. Let's head off then and check out the rest of this deck. Moving into the upper saloon, I'll point out that window that I mentioned from the main deck. This is what's drawing all that natural light all the way down to the lower deck. This is a really clever piece of design that has a great effect on the interior, not only on this deck, but the decks below as well. Over on this side, you have another day head. Again, it just means that guests don't have to be running between decks to use a toilet, well located by the bridge as well. And then we're into the upper lounge. And this is a really nice, quiet, refined space with a huge bar. I mean, this is really properly stocked. It's like a mini galley. It's got loads of cooling space underneath, big sink, of course, nice amount of countertop. And of course, you've got AV control throughout the boat, all on iPads, all individual, all synced up. So wherever you are, you can listen to the music and watch what you want on the TV. And talking of TVs, I said downstairs didn't have the most spectacular TV on this boat. Well, that's because that's here, set into the bar. That's a first for me. I'm not sure I've seen that on the boats I've toured. I think that works really, really well. It means you haven't got a mechanism where you have to pop it up and down. It's not coming out the ceiling up here. It's set into the bar. And obviously when it's off, you'd have no idea it's even there. Really, really cool effect. Heading back into the aft deck. Now, one of the reasons why this boat is so sleek is because it doesn't have a sun deck. And that means that these areas are working really hard. These are your outdoor living spaces up top on this boat. And there's a lot of flexibility here. You know, this boat's got sunbathing space here, but if you wanted to do something a bit different, more tables and chairs, sun lounges, then, then you could do that. But this is a really cool area as well. And of course you could have this as a formal dining area. This boat's got it set up as a more relaxed lounge space. But what's clever about this is they've put a sunroof in this area, in this overhang, you've got a sunroof here. So you can 
expose this area to the conditions if you want to, or if you want a bit of shade, you can close it up again. There's another wet bar out here as well. This time it's fitted with a barbecue for obvious reasons. Again, very located to serve the people who are enjoying these two areas here. And this space down here is a staircase back down onto the main deck. Another interesting thing about the design of this yacht is that this lounge is actually asymmetric. So you have one large side deck here on the port side, only accessing the bridge from the port side, but that obviously gives you a bit more space in the upper lounge here and also a very, very wide side deck on the port side. And this is why the wing stations are down in the cockpit and not up here because you can only use them from one side. But that is access into the bridge, so obviously there's quick access for crew in and out of that area. And then we come to a really spectacular living area on deck on the 111. As I said, no sun deck, but I think this space more than makes up for that. We've seen this pool from below, from inside the owner's cabin. This is what it looks like from on deck. And I think this is just an area that everybody's gonna to gravitate to. You can add some shade if you want to. Obviously it's very exposed on a sunny day like this, but you can add shade if you want a bit of protection, but with the tables and the sofa, and of course the spa bath, sun pads either side, this is the place where you wanna be when you're relaxing in the sun on this yacht. Moving forward, we have a working area, of course, where crew have access to the twin anchors, all the deck gear. When the crew have cleared the space, and this is a really nice little perch here to come and sit down, enjoy the view, looking aft over the yacht. And of course, if you're moving along, you have the sound of the water rushing off the hull. This is a really cool little spot. I think this area, this is what really sells this yacht. From here then, let's head down and have a look at the crew quarters. Now, unfortunately, we don't have permission to film inside the engine room on this yacht, though there is access to it from the crew space here, but we do have permission to film down here in the crew mess. And you've got to remember, you know, it's a 110 foot yacht. I think this is a pretty good crew space, considering there's space on here for six crew across three cabins. So you have this dinette here, somewhere to sit down, watch TV, small galley over on this side, and the crew are on board, so we're not going to poke into their cabins. But what we do have access to is the captain's cabin, which is a, which is a really nice space. I think for this size of yacht. A couple of bunks here, very good headroom in here as well, a little side table, and then I think a really decent size ensuite as well with a separate shower, you know, no, nice amount of space in there to, to get changed. Yeah, this is a, a good size, good size cabin for a yacht of this size for sure. There you have it, that's the Majesty 111. I think that's a really cool package. This is an area of the market packed with really quality competitors, and I think this yacht really stands out. But let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you wanna watch more content on boats this size, then we'll put some of our tours up here. If you want some sea trials, you can click down here. And if you'd like to subscribe, click up here. Thanks for watching.